Look at this guy. He's doing it the hard way. I can't believe it. You were late for the meeting with Solid Lizard. You know how mad he gets when you're late. Uh, I'm in the middle of something important. No, you're not. I can see you watching vintage home movies. You know that, right? I obviously can't hide anything from you, can I? But can you see Gramps? He needs help. I'm in the final stages of constructing my kitchen countertops. This area is specifically designed to accommodate the stove. I will need to build both the frame and the countertops themselves. To maintain consistency with the countertop design on the opposite side, I intend to make this side half wood and half concrete. The process of creating molds for the cement has become significantly easier and constructing the boxes is almost second nature to me now. However, it remains quite time consuming and there's no way to expedite the process. It involves an endless amount of drilling and screwing. One aspect of the process that I particularly enjoy is crafting the wooden sections of the countertops. Sanding down the edges and creating rounded edges makes a substantial difference. Not only does it improve the touch experience, but it also enhances the aesthetic appeal compared to the sharp edges the wood initially has. I've developed a fascination with the yakisugi or burnt cedar look. Now, every time I encounter a piece of wood, I'm tempted to use a torch to give it that burnt appearance. When I finish the burnt wood with wood stain, I find the result incredibly beautiful. Get going, or a solid lizard is going to be pissed. I know, I know. I'm on my way right now. Where is it from here? Go straight and then make a right at that alleyway and you're there. I'm almost at the meat spot. Watch my back this time. I had two new tech scumbags on top of me before you warned me last time. I can't help it if you're using low-grade bargain bin sensors. Credits are tight. Find a way to hack into the bank mainframe and we won't have that problem anymore. I'm programmed to assist only in legal matters. It was a joke, geez. Given that the stove will have some weight to it, I plan to reinforce the concrete with thick rebar. You can purchase the rebar at the hardware store, but they require you to cut it yourself. This method may be somewhat dangerous for those unfamiliar with the process. I'm surprised they let people cut it themselves. Now I'm going to caulk the box, mix the cement, and add the copolymer, as I mentioned in the previous episode. While it might seem like overkill with all the rebar, I believe it's essential to provide a strong support for the countertop's design. It's better to be safe than sorry to prevent potential cracking in the cement later on.
One of the most tedious aspects of this process is removing the air bubbles in the cement. Even after a significant amount of tapping, it still may not be enough. You might need to tap the box until your arms feel like they're about to fall off. No joke. And then continue doing it. If you appreciate DIY Japan, please show your support by hitting the like button and consider subscribing to help the channel grow. Thanks again. Now, the least enjoyable part cleanup. You're late. Is that really you? Other bidders offering 3 million credits. Why should I sell to you? I know you don't care about money. And why the heck are you in a child's body? New tech goons blasted the last body I had. This was the closest body around I could hack into. It's a bit creepy. It has its perks. But I get easily distracted for some reason. We dealing or what? You have what I asked for? It was a bit of a weird request, but I have a fresh batch from the past. Ooh, cookies. I was running out. Thank you. Here's what you asked for. Let's get going before we miss our jump window. Catch you later, Gecko. It's Solid Lizard. Why is this button so distracting? The most exciting part of making these counters is finally opening the molds to see the end result. This is the first time I've used a cement mixture without fiberglass. And it's also the first time I'm pouring cement in the summer. Previously, it would take weeks for the concrete to dry in winter. But I was surprised to see it dry in just two days this time. However, this batch does have more imperfections compared to previous portions. Remember, to tap the concrete until your arms feel like they're about to fall off to eliminate most of the bubbles. The final step is to add a layer of epoxy resin, as before, to seal it. I haven't constructed the frame for this side of the countertops yet. I'll need to ensure that this area is perfectly level so that the stove sits securely on it. Man, this place is backwards. No wonder it takes you long to build things. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who are you? Are you me? I'm not me. I'm you. I'm your great-great-grandson. I traveled here from the future. But why? I saw you were having trouble, so I brought you this device. Give it a try. I'll be using a new laser I obtained from my future self, which comes from a company called Devo. My future self has learned a lot from past experiences. This 3D laser can project a laser beam in a 360 direction and even includes futuristic glasses. Previously, I had difficulty ensuring the countertops were level, resulting in the need for shims or pieces of wood to raise the frame and correct the problem. This happened because I cut all the wood beams to the same height, assuming the floor was perfectly level which it wasn't. With a 3D laser, I can now achieve a perfectly even surface. I cut the wood beams to the exact same length and installed them on the floor. But surprise, they don't sit evenly with each other. Obviously, this side of the floor isn't perfectly level either. What can you expect from an old house? Some of the beams are warped and not perfectly straight. However, this is not a problem. We just need them to match the same height where they stand. 
I mark the beams using the laser as a guide and recut them. I also use the laser to align the beams on the floor. This method is undoubtedly the easiest way to achieve a level surface. And the laser made it effortless, eliminating the need for hard work and guesswork. Now, let's test fit the stove. Everything fitting perfectly. I'll be using an induction stove integrated into the countertops with a 200 volt plug for maximum burnt food cooking power. Oh yeah! The countertop measurement with the outlet turned out just right. As you can see, a quarter of an inch lower would have been a big problem but everything is looking good. I'll use the laser to add a few more details. I'm planning to create shelves below the countertops and the laser will ensure they are perfectly level. I've stained the wood and applied a coat of polyurethane. Additionally, I've created a wood trim to go all the way around the upper part of the countertops. Of course, I've given it the burnt wood treatment and applied a coat of polyurethane over it as well. I can't express how exciting it is to finally have a stove. I love cooking at home, and this addition is almost as welcoming as the toilet was. <laughs> almost. The kitchen is now beginning to resemble the vision I had for it. The transformation has been gradual and while it's nearly complete, there are still several tasks and fixes remaining. Nevertheless, it represents a significant improvement from its original state. Just look at what it looked like before. Ugh. done my beautiful thanks for all your help can't you stay a little longer I could use another me around here I mean you I can't I wish I could but my time is up good luck with the rest of the house gramps man what a nice me You still have a plenty of time. Why didn't you stay and help? And pass up on eating real ramen noodles? Have you tasted the slop in the future? No, you haven't because you can't taste. Uh, I need to inhabit new glasses. What you need is a new English accent. Can you change this voice setting? I can do a British accent if you prefer. No, thanks. I'll pass. Now hush. I can't enjoy my food while you're talking. I prepared your time jumping though. Have a good trip. Wait, wait, no, no, don't do it. <laughs> Sorry, just making me say is kind of. Can you look that way? <laughs> I can do a British accent. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> ah, 
Okay, you gotta go that way. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you do it with me in the room? I don't understand. I can do a British accent if you Ah, I lost. I lost. Again, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit that like button to help the channel grow. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so already and you enjoy my content. Thank you, everyone, for your continued support. See you next time.